Hi, David Green here. I'd just like to take you through a bit of tutorial on extracting um, compositional scalars from thermal data sets, like uh, the task for getting uh, information out of Grassy. So the idea is to, for each sample, to um, get a handle on the composition of the minerals by monitoring peak positions of, of these four different minerals. Let's go through the, the Garnet one. So first I'll open the data set, and I'm going to open the thermal data set, because that's where I'm going to be working, garnets. So there's garnet in here, of course, we can go and see that, where it is, we'll go to the scatter screen. Um, there's a scatter screen, scope at the top left on the set is going to be, there's a number of things here, I want the most evolved stuff, the most the stuff that... Um, the spectral geologist has, has given us. So the thermal infrared constrained least squares one groups equals garnet. And I'm going to plot it as a histogram two, which is a weighted histogram as opposed to a normal histogram with 10 centimeter bins. I'm going to plot it showing down the depth of the sample or the drill hole and it's weighted by the set weight or the weight of the mineral in the unmixing algorithm and the uh, colored by the, the, the actual mineral itself. So we can see that most of the garment bearing samples have uh, been interpreted as andradite and some of them as prosula. So I want to, uh, this, this sample here for instance, it's, um, it's got andradite and grossula. So this could be a mix of two garnets, but let's assume that it's actually the algorithm trying to fit something that's between grossula and andradite, the solid solution, by having to use uh, a bit of grossula and a bit of andradite to do that. So that's one way of judging the composition of the, the minerals here. This sample here contains something between andradite and grossula. Uh, the sample down here looks like it's mainly grossula, because it's blue. And most of the other samples are very andradite like. So that's a coarse way of looking at the composition of the minerals. A final way of doing it is to monitor or track the individual spectral feature. Let's go and look at that. So I've selected a grossula here. I'll go to the spectrum and compare that grossula spectrum, which is in the rainbow colors, with a library mineral. So here I'll select the primary library, TIR, and that grossula is selected. Okay, so andradite and grossula have two different spectra. So I'm flicking back and forth here, and you can see the only real difference is a wavelength shift. And we can track that, the continuous change in that wavelength. Okay, so the question though is which feature to choose? Well, one way of doing it is to is to go find a friend. So here's a paper by a giant in the field, Carson Laukamp and others from CSIRO mainly, looking at uh, grandite or grossular andradite garnets uh, using spectral techniques. And he's identified uh, a number of spectral features that could be used to track the composition of the garnet. Okay, And we're actually going to arrive at this feature D in the end. Leaving out the friend, how can we arrive at spectral feature D, which is this one here, is the best one to use? Well, if we look at, we could use this feature over here, but it looks kind of complicated. Okay, and it changes a bit between the different varieties of these grosses and andradites. It could be hard to pin down what the wavelength of that is. These things over here are much better. So we've got a trough, a peak, a trough, and a peak. Which one do you use? Well, we can be guided by maybe any of these look fine, really. But um, they're going to be confounded or confused when there are other minerals in the mix, which can make these features not as easy to see. So what other minerals have we got? Well, we get a lot of pyroxene. We, I, we, have to go, we can go through this you know, taking time. And, and in real life, that's what we should do, find out, what to fix, find out which is the best feature to use. It has to be um, a nice and diagnostic, which is all these are. And we have to be able to see it in as many samples as possible. So if we go, for instance, and look at uh, orgite, which is in here, 
Yeah. And diopside, hidden bergite, all these have features which seem to overlap with some parts of that grossular spectrum, the lower wavelength parts of it. So the higher wavelength parts of the grossular spectrum maybe will be less affected by the by the uh, any pyroxene which is in the sample. We have to go through all the other um, potentially confounding minerals in that way. But in this case, it is pyroxene is, is the one we're worried about. So I'm tempted to use the, the longest wavelength thing because that keeps me away from where the pyroxene is. So that's this feature here at around about um, 11,900, say 12,000 nanometers. Okay, I'm going to track the wavelength of that feature there. How to do it? We make a scalar. So top left here, edit, new scalar, name, I'm going to call it Garnet 12,000 approximately. W4, I'm going to be tracking the wavelength of it. I'm going to put it in mineralogy and look for garnets. And the method I want to use, there are two methods for extracting wavelength information from uh, the spectra. This one called profile, which is the default, and another one near the bottom called pfit. And I'll use that. pfit. Next. So the wavelength units, nanometers, that sounds correct. I'm looking for a peak, not a trough, so we'll change that to peak. Uh, with the interval that I want to fit a polynomial to, that then I can extract the wavelength from, is what I want to do next. So the fitting interval is, well, just eyeballing um, 11,000, say, 880 to 12. 300 say and then there's a filter here which restricts any of the results to this, this sort of more restricted range oops 100 okay I can put a filter on how deep the the, uh, the spectral feature is and that's an important thing to do but I'm not going to do it right here for now um, and I won't use any any continuum renewable, um, which is important if we're going to be giving the depths of features. Uh, and I'm going to be using, there's a number of layers we can use, normal, normalized spectra, or just a, a, an unnormalized spectra, which is what I'll use. And I'm looking for the wavelength at this maximum. I'm going to click on evaluate, which brings up a, a window that allows me to evaluate the performance of this scalar. Go back to the scatter screen. And as I wander around, I can see how how well is the scalar doing? Right. So it can be white line is the sample spectrum, and the orange line is the fit that I'm getting for it. Okay, so one thing I can do is increase the polynomial order. So let's boost it up to say seven. Go back to evaluate, and it's modeling the spectrum uh, somewhat better. Um, and let's have a look. So, so it's, it seems to be fitting the feature quite well. It's capturing this peak in most places, which is just in here. So I think I'll, I could tweak it a bit, but let's just go with this and see how we go. Okay, so um, I could tweak with the, some of the parameters over here to see to, to restrict this a little more, but I won't. Let's finish it. So it's just calculated that scalar. Now let's show it. I'll just increase subs here by another one. Um, and I'm going to show, so set, custom set equals garnet. Again, a scatter diagram of depth. And I want to show the scalar that I've just made. Garnet, there it is. Here we go. So we can see that that the sample with the lowest wavelength feature at 12,000 is this one here, and it's the one which is most grossular like in, in the unmixing, spectral unmixing. The one that looked a bit more mixed here with some androdite and some grossular is indeed uh, got a, a longer wavelength heading towards the more androdite rich things, which are all these up here. Okay. So, what I want to do really is to export. This, this stuff. I could export it every single point you see there and then in Excel do some sort of sum totaling and averaging across each sample. 
but there is a shortcut here. As it happens, each of the uh, samples, if I go to the tray screen, has actually been tagged with a domain. See these colors here? This is the domain scalar. And that's been used to do the spectral unmixing for each sample separately. So the, the, all the, the data set has been domain like this, and each domain has been treated separately as far as unmixing goes. So I will um, use those domains because they are actually separating each sample. Okay, go back to scatter screen. Uh, I could color these up by domain, for instance. And locations, domain, and you can see each sample there. Right. So I'm going to export this data. Export down sample is what we use. And I'm going to down sample it by domain. Okay. And there are 26 domains, 26 samples, and one bin per domain. I'm going to use the final mask, because the, the final mask is stuff that's not actual rock, so we'll leave that as being a filter. And I don't want to export all this stuff, I just want to export the scalars, the things which I've calculated. And the scalar that I want to export is the Garnet 12,000 wavelength. I'll also export the domain, because that tells me where I am. Domain, and I use control click to select that so that it is selected in addition to the garnet one. And you can see it, the binning method for the scalars, it's going to average them. Okay, so it's going to average the 12,000 wavelength scalar. Not exactly sure what it's going to do with the domain. Hopefully there's something sensible with it. Next, now I'm going to save that not as a TSG data set, but as a CSV file. I'll select it. It's going to put it in the folder where the data sits from. And I'm going to call this one garnet. Scalars. It's done that. Let's go and look for it now. Here I am in the data set and Garnet Scalars down here. Double click on that. And it's appeared on my other screen. I'll just drag it over so you can see it. And here we have for each domain a Garnet wavelength and some nulls where there was uh, no wavelength being able to be found. Okay, and we can um, import the sample numbers for this. I already have a spreadsheet relating the domains to the sample number, which I just built by looking at the trace screens. So I can copy this and. Paste it in. Paste it in here. Now we can move it over if we want. Okay, so I have a, a uh, sample number and a, a garnet wavelength to go with it. Now this, there are numbers here where there is no garnet. In the sample according to the unmixing so it's managed to find a feature that that, um, that corresponds to what we're looking for but it may not be correct so i would filter the set of wavelengths by to the own to include only the ones that actually have uh, garnet identified in the unmixing algorithm there are other ways of filtering it we can put a filter on the on the wavelength algorithm to to make sure that it's finding a minimum sized feature before it will count it. I didn't put that feature on, but we can do a filter another way and it would be this way. So only these domains, so domain number one, domain number two, that sort of thing will have the um, have relevant garnets. So you can filter it that way in here by uh, some already filtered because they couldn't find features. Some of them could be furpies because they're finding uh, what could well be just noise in the spectra. So filter these ones. Um, that's how to do it. I'll leave it at that for now. Uh, good luck.